In 1997, Westwood Studios released Blade Runner on PC, a point-and-click and sometimes point-and-shoot adventure game. It is by far one of my favorite adaptations of a movie into a video game, matching the atmosphere of Ridley Scott's 1982 film. The game is a side story to the original film where you play Blade Runner Ray McCoy, tracking down a completely different set of replicants while the film's Rick Deckard is tracking a different group of replicants. Deckard does come up in conversation, but you won't really meet him in the game. You will, however, meet a few familiar characters, including Eldon Tyrell, Rachel, Gaff, Leon, Sebastian, and Hannibal Chu, most of them voiced by the original actors. As Blade Runner McCoy, you'll have to search for clues, question suspects, fire your gun every now and then, and even perform the reactive Voight Comp test to see whether or not your suspect is a replicant. What I dug especially about this game is that your gameplay affects the ending, of which there are several of varying moralities. There are about three core endings in terms of where McCoy ends up at the end of the game. Either you gun down all the replicants and prevent their escape, you escape with all the replicants as you believe you may be one in the game's ambiguous suggestions, or you can run off with one replicant you form a romance with. It's ultimately up to you who will be your friends and who will be your enemies. One little feature I've always admired about this game that I wish more modern adventure games would take a cue from is the automatic emotional response. If you don't feel like using the game's dialogue trees, you can simply select an emotional reaction that will be favored for each conversation. And voila, no more dialogue tree. Admittedly, this can limit the kind of endings you can acquire, but it does make for some interesting results to see where exactly these paths will lead you. The game has been considered a bit of a rare gem. This is because during a relocation of Westwood Studios, the original source files were lost, making the possibility of a modern HD upgrade impossible. However, this didn't stop the game from having a digital release on GOG, thanks to an alliance between Alcon Interactive Group and ScumVM. It was ScumVM in particular that had to reverse engineer the game engine, which took years to complete with the detailed 3D environments and random story paths. And after all that work, the 21st century digital version of the Blade Runner PC game is... good, but certainly not great. Okay, so first, the good news. Being a retooled version of the game, not much has changed in terms of the gameplay and story. The point-and-click interface has not changed, keeping the UI as minimal as possible when doing your detective thing around dystopian Los Angeles. The events are still within your control to change as you can select your auto-response based on behavior or favorite dialogue tree. The easter eggs are all still active as are the multiple endings. No cinematic sequences, voices, backgrounds, or music have been altered or removed from the game. In terms of the story and events, it's pretty much the same game. The bad news is that there are some noticeable technical issues in terms of missing features. The most troubling aspect of the game is your momentum. In the original game, one click would send McCoy walking, double clicking would result in him running, a triple click would lead to super running, and the more clicking would essentially turn you into the Flash. This was an especially useful feature considering some of the larger landscapes would take extra time to traverse. While the GOG version seems to have some momentum in a few scenes, it feels greatly diminished. In fact, there are certain scenes where it seems no matter how many times you click, McCoy will move slower, as though the game is chugging. Come to think of it, the whole game just kind of feels a little bit more chunky than it did in the original, which still runs exceptionally smooth in Windows 10. Another immediate thing I noticed was that the visuals seemed a little too low quality, even for a game from 1997 with voxel graphics. I checked the GOG settings and there was nothing for video quality. Okay, that's fine, the original didn't have much graphic control. Maybe I could tweak the gamma in-game to make things look a little better. <sighs> nope. The controls once present for altering the gamma settings are now gone. ScumVM has pretty much saddled us with a display that can't be altered, which means that you're pretty much stuck with the cloudy blacks within this neo-noir setting. Compare this to the 1997 release, which still pops with the visual controls. Playing the game in this state just makes it appear far older than it really is. Priced at $10, the digital release isn't too bad. These technical issues are minor for as noticeable as they were. If you still own the original game, this isn't quite worth the purchase considering how much less you get, small though these altercations may be. However, if you're a big fan of Blade Runner and you've never played this game before, it's a decent enough way to experience what is easily one of the better game adaptations of a movie.